It's all happening. All the fears are coming to fruition. The New York Knicks are clearing cap space, shedding salary, sweetening the old pots for this guy, Jalen Brunson. The Knicks last night traded Alec Burks and Nerland Noel to the Pistons to clear 19 million additional salary so they can secure the bag for Brunson to the tune of a reported 110 million bucks. You can't, you can't make this stuff up. This on the heels of the Knicks making all these crazy moves in the draft and inexplicably not picking a player like Duke three-point ace AJ Griffin at 11 in order to shed salary. Why? What's going on? What's the plan? And I feel compelled to stress this. And I want this on record. I want this noted. I'm a huge Jalen Brunson fan. Loved him at Nova. I said he should have been picked higher than he was originally in the draft. I love him in the pros. His four years with Dallas, he's been a really good player, a really good shooter, a big-time leader and passer, and a willing defender. Not a great defender, but his effort is great. He's a classic point guard and a major area of need for the Knicks for literally decades. I love Brunson, just like I love Fred Van Vliet, like I love Mike Conley, like I love fellow former Nova guard Kyle Lowry. I love these guys, but they're really good to great players who are big time winners, but unlike what's about to happen in New York, those guys are not the best player on their teams in most cases, third best. Now the money's insane, you see it on the board, it's the going raid, and Brunson fits, right? But he doesn't get the Knicks over the hump. They clear all this cap room, and honestly, I can't even scream playoffs. I can't even sit here right now and guarantee, after clearing all this cap room and not picking a player at 11 in the lottery, I, you can't even guarantee that the Knicks are a playing team as we speak. They're, they're not close to the Celtics or the Bucks or the Heat or the Nets or the Sixers. To me, they're not even Cleveland or Chicago or Atlanta. That's eight. Heck, I, I, right now, I don't even think they're as good as Charlotte. Brunson was always coming to the Knicks after Dallas messed up and didn't give him the 55 mil before the trade deadline this year. Brunson's agent was Leon Rose, who's now the Knicks president. Leon Rose's first client was Jalen's dad, Rick. Rick is now in the Knicks coaching staff. And I want to stress... I really, really like Jalen Brunson, but there's no plan, no accountability, no clue. In other words, this is Knicks basketball. The match was sad. The results was sad. The news conference was worse. I love Serena Williams. I think she's the greatest tennis player ever, male or female. There are numbers and a feel that obviously backs up my statement when I say she's the greatest of all time. And that's why I was in a state of sports sadness, because it just feels over. Serena Williams, playing in her first competitive match in 364 days, got knocked out of Wimbledon in the first round, losing a grueling three-hour set to a woman ranked 115 in the world, who was playing in her first ever Wimbledon. Wow. It was just the second time in 79 career Grand Slam appearances that Serena lost in the first round. She couldn't close. She looked tired. Afterwards, you heard it, Townsend Spence. And why not? Serena Williams is 40. Serena Williams had 54 unforced errors yesterday. That's not Serena Williams. Remember, she retired from Wimbledon last year after tearing her hamstring and hadn't played since. She was ahead of her rehab, and she had that legendary competitive fire burning as, at the end of the day, you know she wanted to be out there. Look. We are spoiled by our legends recently, right? Tom Brady, LeBron James, they're still playing at the GOAT level. Sometimes you forget about Willie Mays stumbling around in the Mets outfield. We've all wanted that 24th Grand Slam title. She's been so close. She's been in the finals. It just hasn't happened. And here's the deal, and I live for Serena. It's not going to happen. We all kind of have to deal with it. Doesn't diminish her GOAT status with 
23. I bet you Serena tries to play in the U.S. Open. It's New York. It's her event. I bet she even surprises us in August in a match or two. But she's not going to win the U.S. Open. Whether or not she plays one more time is almost irrelevant to this discussion. It's over. Appreciate it. It ended yesterday. Serena Williams is the greatest and most dominant tennis player ever. I feel terrible for Alex Cora and Red Sox Nation. Seriously. They arguably had their worst loss of their season last night because their closer, Tanner Houck, isn't vaccinated. And thus, he cannot make a trip to Toronto. So a great comeback to take the lead on the road in Toronto against the great Blue Jays team went down the toilet. Like so many other games that have been wasted away by the Red Sox leaky pen this year. Robles in, Jays up, and... You know it, because no team has blown more ninth inning leads this year than Boston. And to have a closer in this guy who doesn't prioritize winning and the team and the fans and public health and safety, shame on you, Tanner Houck. Shame, shame, shame. It's shameful and it's sad. And it hits home how the Red Sox need arms. They need starters. They need bullpen help. And... Alex Cora said today, and this is big news, there have been ongoing discussions about how Garrett Whitlock could be used when he returns from the IL. Whitlock, of course, so valuable for Boston out of the bullpen last year. I mean, look at some of these nuggets of utility on your screen. Sox pen has been a downright dumpster fire. And by the way, if the season ended today, the Red Sox would play the Jays in Toronto in the first round, which means Hawk couldn't pitch, okay? Which means this cat needs to go and needs to be replaced. The Red Sox, to their credit, have been blistering hot in June, and they deserve all the credit in the world, and they're going to make the playoffs, as we've been saying. But also, as we've been saying, it's Toronto, who's the third best team in the American League behind the Yankees and the Astros. And frankly, it's really not up for debate. Now, If Chris Sale comes back and he's healthy and throwing 96 and the Sox trade for Luis Castillo and add a reliever, we're going to have a different conversation. Boston's had a great knack of beating bad teams this year. Phenomenal. That's how you make the playoffs. But they've struggled big time this season against the Yankees, Jays, and Rays in the division. And if your closer isn't committed and the bullpen is a complete and utter embarrassment, Total changes need to be made in that bullpen. Alex Cora, the other guys in the clubhouse, Red Sox Nation, deserve better. We have a whiteboard. We're going to use it. DeAndre Ayton appears likely to be on the move from the Phoenix Suns. The market for Ayton should be... I have the perfect word for this. Robust. I think the Phoenix Suns are making a huge mistake in making DeAndre Ayton into the scapegoat. First of all, look, I had no issue with the pick, number one overall when they made it, right? Same draft as Luka Doncic, same draft as Trey Young. I thought all three were gonna be excellent. Obviously, those two have been clearly better, but DeAndre Ayton has been a really good to great player. And the fact that they're choosing to most likely move on from him in a sign and trade, it makes no sense. Chris Paul can't win a big basketball game if his life depended on it. That's who you blame, not DeAndre Ayton. It was all there for the Phoenix Suns to win a championship this year. All there for the Phoenix Suns up to nothing on Milwaukee to win a championship the year before. The team that I think would be amazing, and the irony here is thick, for Ayton would be the Atlanta Hawks. You team him with the aforementioned Trey Young, all of a sudden the Eastern Conference, you're cooking. I think a lot of teams are going to be looking at Ayton thinking, all right, change of scenery. The guy obviously is a walking double-double. I expect the market to be robust and a lot of regret eventually on the part of the Phoenix Suns. Sticking with NBA free agency, the pursuit of Zach Levine will be, and stay with me on this, fruitless. Because I think Levine is going back to Chicago. I really like the Chicago Bulls. I like their core. I like their coach. I like their backcourt. 
and Levine is a walking bucket. You don't let someone like Zach Levine walk away. And conventional wisdom says they won't. This guy pumps in 20 points a game. I mean, the last bull to have four straight seasons of 20 points a game was some guy named Michael Jordan. I'm a big fan of Zach Levine. I'm sure it's going to be a highly coveted free agent, but I think it's going to be fruitless because he's going back to Chicago. Over to golf, where Brooks Kepka has claimed that he did not ch- choose to join the Live Golf Tour until after the U.S. Open. Brooks Kepka's comments are comical. I mean, please. It's like the old Costanza. It's not a lie if you believe it. Brooks Kepka obviously was lying. Obviously was lying when he said that the questions about Live Golf were ruining the U.S. Open. Remember, earlier this calendar year, he said anyone who joins the league that's backed by Saudi Arabia would, at the end of the day, be selling out. So, Brooks Kepka comes across here as a fraud. Now, Brooks Kepka spoke at the Live Golf News Conference yesterday to promote a, a, a tournament in the United States soil for the first time, you know, Pumpkin Ridge in Portland, Oregon, and that's great. You know, he talked about how the money matters and also the schedule, which is something the PGA Tour needs to really go to school on. Fewer events. Kepka's obviously been nicked and knacked, so I can appreciate why someone prioritizes money. I can appreciate why someone prioritizes schedule. Obviously, it's not PGA Tour competition, but still can compete in the majors. But don't tell me it was after the U.S. Open that if you're Brooks Kepka, that's the first time you thought about that because that's laugh out loud funny and also you're a liar. What a quote from my guy Joe Mixon. The 2022 Bengals will be, I don't even have to think for this one. He used the word for me. Smoke it. Smoke it. On fire. And Joe Mixon's a big part of this, right? Obviously, Joe Burrow is one of the four best quarterbacks in the NFL. But Joe Mixon's one of the five best running backs in the league. And Jamar Chase is an absolute star. T. Higgins is unbelievable. Boyd is incredible. And remember, they did a brilliant job in terms of signing three new starters on the offensive line. That, of course, the areas of weakness. Smoking. This team, this offense, going to be on fire this season. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. And don't forget to hit the bell for more videos.